In this video, we're going to take a closer look at while loops, which are the other type of loop control structure that determines how many times some block of code should execute. But before we look closer at while loops, let's kind of contrast them with the first type of loop that we looked at, which is a for loop. So for loops are great um, for a lot of applications in Arduino because we typically set up some control variable, which um, basically counts how many times we should execute the loop. So for loops should typically be used in design when we have some known number of times that a loop should execute. We typically have some explicit counter in a lot of the examples we looked at, we just called it I, or for our, um, our servo example, we just called it angle to represent all the different angles. We typically increment or decrement it and there's some expected number of times that it should execute, right? So sometimes it could be hard coded while we're saying, you know, like while I is less than 10, have it keep running. Or sometimes it could be computed. So we could be counting the number of messages we've received and then um, continuing the loop to until we get up to that point, right? Um, so a, a for loop is often uh, coined as like a count controlled loop where it's going to execute some known number of times. A while loop on the other hand is typically referred to as a condition controlled loop. Like we are not sure how many times it is going to execute. We're just waiting for some certain condition to be uh, no longer true, right? So we could be waiting for some event to occur. So in this example, um, we're waiting to see if, you know, some switch um, is pressed or we could be waiting uh, for some case to be true. So maybe we're inspecting letters coming in on the serial port and we're continuing until we see a new line character, which is represented by backslash n. So for the while loops, we typically use those in design cases where we're not sure how many times it's going to execute. We're just waiting for some condition um, to be true or false. And then for a for loop, what we're doing is we're waiting, we have some expected number of times that it should execute. And we've set it up very deliberately with kind of those three key pieces, the initial initialization, the condition, and the update. So this is what our while loop looks like. It's it's almost, a, it's basically identical to an, an if statement, but instead of the word if, it just says while, which indicates that this loop is going to continue to execute while this condition is true. So it comes in, it tests the condition. If that condition is true, it will perform the loop body and then go back up and check the condition. And it keeps doing this over and over again until the condition is false and then it stops. So the important thing to note is that it checks the condition before executing the loop body. So if this condition is false the first time it checks, the loop will never perf be performed. So our condition here is just gonna be some Boolean expression that it computes to true or false. Um, so here's a couple of examples, right? We could say something like while the button uh, pressed equals true, and this is like some shorthand because this would just run over and over again and be an infinite loop because there's nothing inside of here to change that value, right? Um, this is just saying while wow, that's true, you know, say that the serial button is pressed. Um, here we could say while received does not equal backslash n, like checking each character that is received, um, keep repeating this over and over again. Or here we could say while the temp is greater than 100 degrees, you know, call some function that turns on a fan and then get the temperature again. All right, so these are common examples in, in where we would use a while loop, because we're not sure how many times, right, we need to check or to see if something has happened, to see if a button is pressed or something like that. We're just waiting for some condition to be true. Um, so just like we looked at before, right, we could have while loops inside of for loops, for loops inside of while loops. We can have if statements inside of while loops or while loops inside of if statements. We can combine all of these different conditional statements in any format um, to do whatever we would like for it to do. And so you can test out this example to kind of see what it's doing in, in your own environment. Um, but a common example that is a lot more common with while loops than for loops is, um, or a common error, should I say, is uh, infinite loops. Right, so we have to explicitly update something about this condition or it will always be true and the loop will never end, right? So here I'm saying declare some integer variable i while i is less than 10, print the value of i, but inside of this loop i is never updated so i will never be not less than 10. So this would just run over and over and over again. Um, so that, that would be an infinite loop. This would be another infinite loop here because what we're doing is we're saying while the button pressed equals true, 
but we're not saying equals equals, which is how we do that Boolean expression to compare those two things. What this is saying is force button press to be equal to true. This is our assignment operator because it's a single equal sign. And so this would always be true and this would run over and over and over again. I guess to go back and I'll probably update this slide, right? This would also be an infinite loop because this is saying while some variable called button pressed equals true, print that the button is pressed, but this variable is never updated again. So this would just happen over and over and over again. We would have to have some con some additional statement inside of here that says, okay, maybe do a digital read on that button to see if it's pressed and update it then to see if, it, if it's uh, no longer true. Um, so that, that's another example of an infinite loop. To close out here, I'm gonna highlight two keywords that modify the standard way that a loop operates. And so these are continue and break. Um, and they are complete statements on their own with a semicolon. So what the continue statement does is if it's inside of a loop and we hit the continue statement, what it does is it ends that current iteration of the loop, meaning that it does not go on with the rest of the loop body. What happens is it goes back up to the next iteration of the loop, meaning it will check the condition. And then if that condition is true, it will then go back through and perform it. So it's basically used to skip portions of the loop body in some instances. It's typically inside of some conditional statement within a loop. Um, same with the break. It is also still conditionally inside of an if statement within a loop, um, but this is used to exit a loop early. And so if we encounter the break statement, it doesn't go back up and, and maybe perform the, the loop body again. It just jumps out of the loop without executing any more instructions. And so it might be helpful to take a look at an example here, but using these is not too common. They can be helpful in some instances, but oftentimes um, we, we avoid using it because it just typically means that you didn't design your condition for your loop effectively enough. Um, but let's take a look at a couple examples here before we close out. Um, so these are both using a for loop. So here we created a for loop that starts at some value of i equals zero, goes up until i is less than or equal to 20, and then goes in steps of one to i. But inside of there, we have this condition that says if i mod two equals zero, basically checking to see the remainder of i when divided by two and to see if that's zero, which just checks to see if i is even or odd. So this condition is true if i is even. So when i is even, what happens is it encounters this continue statement. And so it would not continue on with the rest of the loop body. It would not run the serial.println line. What would happen is it would go back up, do the update, and then check the condition again, and then go on to the next value. So the, the effect here would be, instead of printing all of the values from zero up until 20, it would only print the odd values because when we hit an even value, we hit this continue statement and it doesn't print. It would then just go on to the next one. So that's what would happen here. In the second example where we have the break statement, what would happen is we start at zero, we go up until 20, um, but not including 20 because we're saying, well, i is less than 20 and we go in steps of one. What would happen is it says if i is equal to seven, we go to the break statement and that would exit the loop entirely. It wouldn't go back up and check any other conditions. It just stops it kind of dead in its tracks there. So what would happen is i would be zero and it would go all the way up until seven and it would basically print all values zero all the way up until six, but when it hits the i equals seven, it would then stop the loop. So it prints zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's kind of it for our discussion on loops. There's a lot you can do with it, and we'll continue to revisit these with other exercises, but that's kind of the basics of using for loops and while loops.